Remember when you first learned the alphabet as a child? You weren't expected to memorize all 26 letters at once. Instead, teachers grouped them as A to G, H to P, and so on. By breaking the alphabet into smaller chunks, learning became much easier. This simple teaching technique, known as chunking, forms the foundation for how we process information in everyday life. And guess what? Machines work in a similar way. Chunking isn't just a teaching method, it's a cognitive psychology concept that also plays a vital role in data processing, especially in AI systems that use RAG. In this tutorial, you will learn what is chunking, why chunking, the types of chunking. We'll also implement three key chunking techniques and evaluate the results. Stay on till the end to see which chunking strategy did well for our use case. Welcome back to the advanced RAG series. In this video, we'll explore the need for chunking. If you're here for the implementation details, feel free to skip ahead to the chunking strategies and implementation section. In the previous video, we introduced Techno Health Solution, a fictional company that applied the RAG pattern to address healthcare challenges. However, the solution they implemented isn't without flaws. This basic RAG approach, referred to as naive RAG, has limitations. According to the white paper, Retrieval Augmented Generation for Large Language Models, a survey, naive RAG presents several challenges. Retrieval challenges. The retrieval phase often struggles with precision and recall, selecting irrelevant chunks and missing crucial information. Generation difficulties. During generation, the model may hallucinate, producing content not supported by the retrieved data. Outputs can also suffer from irrelevance, toxicity, or bias. Augmentation hurdles. Combining retrieved information with the task can be tricky, leading to disjointed or repetitive responses. Maintaining a consistent style and tone adds further complexity. To address these issues, there are two other RAG techniques, Advanced RAG and Modular RAG. These three paradigms, Naive, Advanced and Modular, are discussed in the same white paper. Naive RAG It involves a simple three-step process, indexing, retrieval and generation. Advanced RAG builds on Naive RAG by introducing optimization strategies both before and after retrieval, though it still follows a chain-like structure. Modular RAG Evolves from the previous paradigms, offering greater flexibility with iterative and adaptive retrieval methods. In this video, we'll focus on one key aspect of Advanced RAG, optimizing indexing in the pre-retrieval stage, with a special emphasis on chunking. What is chunking? It is a process of dividing large text into smaller, more digestible pieces or chunks. This technique is crucial for processing large datasets efficiently and is often a preliminary step in many NLP tasks. Why chunking matters? Chunking isn't just about breaking text into smaller pieces. It also plays a critical role in how efficiently and accurately information is retrieved, as well as the cost of processing that information. Retrieval quality. Chunking involves breaking down large text into smaller manageable segments. This segmentation is essential because it allows for more precise information retrieval. Smaller chunks help maintain contextual integrity, enabling the retrieval system to locate specific passages or facts more accurately. Latency and computational efficiency. The size and number of chunks directly impact the latency of RAG systems. Smaller chunks may lead to higher retrieval precision but can also increase the number of queries made to the database, which may slow down response times. Larger chunks can reduce the number of queries but may introduce noise, complicating the retrieval. Storage cost In practical applications, the cost of storage and processing grows with the number of chunks. Efficient chunking strategies can help balance granularity and storage costs. Preventing hallucinations LLMs can generate inaccurate or nonsensical outputs, commonly referred to as hallucinations. Effective chunking can mitigate this risk by ensuring that the context provided to the model is relevant and coherent. How to choose the right chunking strategy? The type of content you're working with plays a crucial role in determining how to chunk it. For news articles, it is best to chunk the text by paragraphs, while for scientific papers, Chunking should be done by sections such as abstract, methods, and results. The embedding model you also use impacts your chunking strategy. For instance, BERT can handle up to 512 tokens only. The nature of user queries is another critical factor. For more detailed and specific queries, 
smaller chunks are necessary to retrieve precise information. However, for general queries, larger chunks often provide enough context to deliver a comprehensive answer. There are several different chunking strategies you can explore and I'll provide resources to help you learn about each one in detail. In this video, we'll focus on three key strategies. Let's quickly talk about fixed size sliding window chunking. This method divides text based on a defined separator and chunk size, allowing for overlapping chunks to preserve context across splits. One popular implementation of this technique is Langchain's character text splitter. It has two advantages. It is simple to implement. It prevents information loss from, sent from sentence breaks. Uh, and it has two disadvantages. It ignores semantic context, potentially splitting words. And it is not ideal for tasks requiring a deeper understanding of the text. Now let's see how this is implemented. Before that, I want to quickly show you the data set, the synthetic data set that I've created. Uh, I've used Claude to generate this data set for me. You can see that there is some structure to this, meaning that there are sections here. This is not very unstructured, but the sections are not consistent across all the case studies. This is essentially a data set of case studies, medical case studies. All right, so we'll first install the necessary packages and import the re relevant libraries. I have already run these commands, so this is ready. Uh, we load the data set here. Let me quickly load the data set. As you can see, uh, the loader has done a little bit of cleanup job for me. It has remote spaces. I'm going to clear this out. Now we'll then pass the list of loaded documents into the create documents method. Uh, that is the text uh, in the text splitter object that we just created. We'll pass the list of documents. We'll then print the chunks. I'm going to just be printing the top 10 chunks here. You will clearly see that page content that is the big, the second chunk, the beginning of the second chunk essentially is the ending of the first chunk. Now let's convert the document into their vector, vector representations. I'll just clear this and run that particular command. We'll do this to essentially store these documents that we just chunked into the Chroma database. Chroma database essentially is a vector data store. Now what we'll do is we will use the vector stores as a retriever method and fetch the latest document and then invoke that particular object with a query and the query is how are nanoparticles being used in Alzheimer's disease treatment. I've already run this you can, as you can see on the screen but let me run this again and this seems pretty relevant to me. We'll implement a simple retrieval augmented generation or the RAG button and use the RAGAS library to evaluate the model's output. RAGAS is a popular framework for evaluating RAG pipelines. I'm using Plaban Nayak's implementation as inspiration for synthetic data, te uh, synthetic test data based evaluation. I will share the link of the article in the description. We'll first we'll create a RAG chain using GPT 4O mini as the LLM and the retriever object we just created earlier. We will also create a synthetic test set from the original data set to assess the groundedness of the LLM response. We will use recursive character text splitter here and we will generate a question chain from the synthetic test data and a ground truth chain to generate answers using the context from the synthetic data. Okay, let me quickly talk about what's happening here. The first thing that we did was generated synthetic data chunks in the cells above that was essentially to generate ground truth now what is ground truth we need the ground truth to so that we use that as a reference and check if the generated answers uh, from the original fixed size reaction that we had created are they similar are they grounded or not so what is happening on each iteration is essentially the chunk from the synthetic data for each chunk questions are generated and that same chunk is also passed as con text to the ground truth chain meaning using the context that is the chunk and the question that was just generated an LLM response is generated and that is appended to the ground truth fixed size list 
as we do the same thing with the answers but the answer the answer is uh, but the answer chain has context coming in from the chroma db essentially the data that was stored in chroma db right we create a list of this and then essentially we create an eval data set here i'm going to quickly run that the next thing we will do is run the ragas evaluation essentially it's done on four metrics the context precision here the context preci uh, precision measures the proportion of relevant context chunks retrieved relative to the total number retrieved faithfulness evaluates how factually consistent the generated answer is with the provided context answer relevancy assesses how well the answer aligns with the question in terms of factual accuracy and semantic similarity to the ground truth and context recall it measures how many relevant context chunks are retrieved compared to the total number of relevant chunks available all right now let's run the evaluation it's going to take some time all right we have the scores now the faithfulness is at 0.7 higher the better obviously 0.7 which is not very good the answer relevancy though is at 0.9 which is very good the context recall is at 0.96 and context precision is at one. All right, let's see how recursive chunking works and see what the eval data looks like. Recursive chunking splits text data based on user-defined separators, uh, the separators that you see here. Uh, it searches for these characters recursively, aiming to create manageable chunks while preserving the original text contextual dignity. This helps keep related pieces of text together, which is critical for maintaining narrative flow. The advantages of recursive chunking is that it maintains semantic coherence by keeping related pieces of text together for meaningful analysis. The disadvantage is that there is a risk of oversplitting if the chunk size is poorly calibrated, potentially causing loss of context. All right, uh, I have already implemented this method. The code is just about same like the fixed size sliding window chunking technique that we saw here previously. I've already run this particular splitter, the recursive character text splitter here. And as you can see on the screen, the there is good overlap between consecutive chunks. Now let's quickly see the data after it was persisted. Basically the vector representations of the documents were persisted. How does it essentially look for similar documents. I'm going to use the same query that we used in fixed size chunking and the document looks something like this. This looks to be a better document than the one that we saw here in fixed size chunking. As you can see that particular section starts here and there is some other information here. However, in the case of recursive chunking this looks like a very clean document here all right uh, the rest of the code is same we'll generate multiple chains we'll use the ragas technique or the ragas eval method to generate evaluation i have already done that in the interest of time let me quickly go there and as you can see the faithfulness of the recursive chunking on the data set that we have just created is at 0.82 which is still better than I'm hoping it's better than uh, fixed size yes it is and the answer relevancy for fixed size is 0.91 I think the same is the case with yes the answer relevancy is the same with recursive chunking as well alright uh, let's move on to the next one semantic chunking Semantic chunking involves taking the embeddings of each sentence in the document, comparing their similarities, and grouping sentences with the most similar embeddings together. This method focuses on text meaning and context, making it highly effective for tasks where maintaining semantic integrity is essential. By using semantic 
By using semantic chunking, the quality of information retrieval is significantly enhanced, making it one of the best options when preserving meaning and context is vital. Let's look at the code. The semantic chunker is still in experimental stage, so you'd want to use it cautiously. The semantic chunker class takes two arguments. One is the embedding model and the other one is breakpoint threshold type. In this particular exercise, I'll be using standard deviation but there are three different threshold types that we can use that is standard deviation there is percentile and there is interquartile the percentile which is the default one in this method all difference all differences between sentences are calculated and then any difference greater than the x percentile is in standard deviation which is what we are using now in this method any difference greater than the x standard deviation is split and in interquartile the interquartile distance is used to split chunks. Let's run the query. I've already run that and we'll see how the document chunks, the chunks of the document look like. Rather larger and the chunking doesn't seem to be very small, which is what we need in, in this particular use case. But let's move on to the other operations. Uh, I have already persisted this in the chroma DB, uh, that is the uh, vector representations, and I am I am running the same query that I have run for both the fixed size window as well as the uh, the recursive chunking methodologies, and you can see that the response for the same question is very very huge. Uh, I am hoping that there is less, or the signal to noise ratio is balanced, because this seems to be like a lot of data for this particular query while recursive and fixed windows had in document obviously because of the chunking size but let's move on we'll go to the part where i have already generated the raga score for that particular uh, for uh, semantic chunking and the score is not very encouraging as you can see the faithfulness and answer relevancy is just too poor all right, let's compare all three chunking strategies that we've used and compare the scores. Uh, it seems like recursive chunking appears to be the most balanced option, offering perfect context precision, high faithfulness, and excellent answer relevancy with good retention of the original context. Fixed size chunking is also a strong performer, especially in terms of recall, making it better for use cases where retaining the most context is critical. Semantic chunking uh, to my surprise performs poorly in terms of faithfulness and answer relevancy making it less suitable for this use case uh, i think it is important to experiment with all types of chunking depending on the use case this is very use case dependent and the kind of document that you're showing to it uh, so for most use case i think involving rag recursive chunking seems to be pro seems to provide the best overall performance balancing accuracy and relevance with minimal unnecessary context I hope you like this video. Please subscribe for more. Thank you so much.